starting knives on the oh. <laughs> good question. I proposed to Raina through this microphone. Ten years ago. Sentimental value. Sentimental value. Okay. I think our youngest member just got here. There we go. Everybody can file in and find some seats. We have some seats up front. Uh, for those who are just walking in, we're going to start in just two minutes. So come on up. Get your seats. I know we had standing room only last time, so you're going to want to sit now. Yeah. So that way you're not stuck standing for the rest of it. We, we, got, we got about six to eight seats over here. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, John, do you have any other mic stands? Um, and this is reserved for no one. So, um, yeah, so people can come right up to the front row. We don't bite. We have our youngest member. Oh, no, that's not it. Oh, okay. very important. That's what I asked you for. That's not it. Okay. All right. Uh, we're all, I guess, ready to start and ready to begin. Welcome, everybody. My name is John Doyle. I'll be uh, part of the team putting this all together for today. I want to thank everybody for coming out here. Again, this is only meeting number two, but the fact that nearly every seat in the house is sat in is a sign of uh, good community building, and uh, we're very ha happy about that and hopeful and uh, we want this to be a very much a team effort where everyone's involved in. And uh, part of the team, everyone remembers the last meeting or you caught it online where we used that, that pad over there. We wrote down a lot of your ideas, 116 in all. Uh, we're still digesting some of it. Some things are as easy as an email to a city agency and we're gonna have some follow-ups on those. Some are gonna require a little bit of a broader-based discussion and trying to bring people in to talk about the issue at hand. Uh, we're going to get to it all, maybe not in this meeting, but we have started with some uh, uh, developing kind of a steering committee, and if people are interested, they come speak to us afterwards, but a steering committee to start breaking these things apart and start addressing individual aspects of it. So with that in mind, I'm just going to invite all, yes, Joanne. Can you make sure everybody received an agenda? Uh, yes, we have agendas that are going around. Uh, the agendas, uh, we have 50 copies, uh, that we may have uh, more people than we have agendas, and for that I'm sorry. Um, but we are going to ask that some of these steering members just come up here, introduce themselves very briefly so you know who they are, and that way if you have a problem you can bring it to them, we'll bring it back. And again, everything we do is going to come through the group. You guys are the umpires, you're going to say what's safe, what's out, but this is just an organizational mechanism to make sure that we have worker bees out there doing work. So uh, without further ado, we're going to start with uh, steering committee member number one, the person who's putting together our bylaws, uh, Beverly Jones. Let's give her a hand. Hi, everybody. It's really, really great to see everybody here. The other thing that we have up here in the front are name tags. Um, one of the things that I feel is important is just because I'm standing up in the front of the room, you sh I shouldn't assume that you know who I am. Um, so uh, the <laughs> folks on the steering committee all have name tags, and um, if other folks want to wear name tags, that's awesome. And I love that Arlo is wearing a half of a name tag. Um, <laughs> welcome, Arlo. Um, okay, so I think, um, who's next? Dan has wandered off. Dan. So Lauren, do you want to come next? And I'll... There we go. Here. Hi everyone, my name is Lauren, and I am a part of the steering committee. That's me. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a little bit of value I don't know, I feel like... I'm from City Island originally, and I just moved back, and I plan to spend the rest of my life here. <laughs> Alright, I am Kim Woodruff. I live in the Boatyard Condos. Happy to see some Boatyarders here. Um, I am on the Education Council for District 11. I see another one of my compatriots from the Education Council. Education is one of my interests, as well as music and art. So I will be taking part in any initiatives that we try to do having to do with art, music, education. Those are my things. Hi, neighbors. My name is John Paradiso. I've uh, lived on City Island for 32 years now. Uh, I'm really excited to be part of this. I feel like there's an energy to this that I haven't felt, honestly, since, uh, since ever. Uh, so I'm really excited to be here. Uh, I work in technology down in the city. I work at startups. So uh, I'm really excited to lend any kind of support I can to just sort of stand this whole thing up and, and make it awesome. Uh, so thanks for coming, everybody. Yep.
Hey guys, I am David Diaz. I am newly to the island, I guess, maybe about a year or so now, and I have certainly found my home forever. Um, plan on growing old hair and put me out in the water and <laughs> Viking funeral. Yeah, Viking funeral, right? But I, I came here specifically because of the community that was, that was all here. I'm originally from, you know, the Throgs Neck and, and Country Club. <laughs> and, <laughs> right? And I have an have a, a, a 11 year old son, and I really wanted him to have something where he could feel a part of the community, have friends, go to school locally. It's so much easier when you just walk down the street and go to school, which is awesome. So I'm glad to see everybody here and all be a part of this because this is exactly why I'm, I'm here. Hi everyone, I'm Jack Aiello. Um, I'm originally from Throgs Neck and I just moved here about two and a half years ago. And um, I work for Southern Westchester BOCES, but I'll be around in any capacity to help out and be uh, be as helpful as possible. All right. All right. Thank you. Hi, I'm Joanne Valletta, and um, if any of you heard of uh, the slogan "Clam Digger," you're looking at one. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm also a secretary and a board member of the American Legion um, Auxiliary. Um, and we do a lot of uh, community service here. And uh, I'm also into uh, dog therapy. I have two more teeth, now I have one, but we go and uh, visit uh, veterans and uh, local um, nursing homes uh, for emotional support um, for the patients. And uh, I, have a, I have an interest in um, Animal Rescue. I worked for the Bronx Zoo for 15 years. And I'm always trying to uh, help out and find homes for animals that are lost on uh, City Island. And um, my focus here really is to make uh, new, 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 pe new residents of the community feel more welcome and that there isn't this divide. Uh, all their lives and people who just came, they should be made to feel just as welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Hi everyone, my name is Luisa Benedetto. I'm also from Throgs Neck. Um, I moved here about four years ago, I want to say. It's been fun. And I'm associated with a few organizations in the borough and happy to help. That's basically it. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm too short for this. <laughs> I'm Teresa Cavani. Um, I've, I'm from Pelham Bay originally. I've lived on the island and bought a house on the island about a year ago. And I have three little kids, so I want to keep the uh, city island great. So, thank you. <laughs> Uh, my name is Dan Schreiber. I'm honestly more comfortable in the back of the room. But um, uh, Clam Digger, children's second generation Clam Digger. We own the old Trader John building. Um, you should come buy your vintage stuff from us. Uh, my wonderful wife's there. She tolerates things like me. Nice. Um, and, and we just want to make a space where people feel comfortable talking and listening to each other. To me, that's more important than everything else. So. Um, with that in mind, um, we're gonna do a uh, quick question. Uh, who made it to last? Who's, who's here for the first time? Awesome. Thank you so much for coming. That's amazing. Um, and who's here for the second time? Who stuck around? Amazing. Pretty, pretty much 50-50, uh, which is wonderful. Um, John's gonna do a quick PowerPoint on um, sort of what we heard at the last meeting, because the idea is we're supposed to be listening. So that's the whole idea. That's the whole agenda. So John's going to do that now. Thank you. John, Thanks. Just mention, um, the cards. Yes. Also, sure. it's wonderful that we have babies in the front of the room. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. That's exactly here for our youngest member here. Also, just because they're not here at the moment, some of them will be coming throughout, but people are coming from work. Uh, we also have on our steering committee right now, Kerry Filigara, 
She was the one who made sure everyone was signed in last time and was very strict on that, so we thank her. Uh, we have John Schwamm and we have Stephanie Fisher. Stephanie is on the bus right now, probably watching through the stream. So, so with that, we're actually going to start. Our, are we almost there. almost there? That is fine. We have other things we can talk about beforehand. Um, is everyone? Does anyone need a seat? We have a seat up here. If there are people in the back who want seats or people are comfortable, that's fine too. Uh, as I said earlier, I'm just going to pull out some of my notes here, but. You guys at the last meeting didn't hold back. We're grateful for that. Many of you, I see Caitlin's here, actually participated through the live stream, gave us comments afterwards. So all in all, there were 112 items that were submitted either through online or in the room. Uh, that also happened at the last meeting. It'll probably go back up. Somebody near the door is at the light switch. It's okay to turn the light switch. That's fine. We'll probably turn it down eventually. Um, but that's very important and you know, there were certain things that, you know, again, as I said earlier, require a greater discussion. I see Joe just walked in, uh, Joe Terzo. Uh, thank you, Joe. And he actually handed me a plan, uh, the DOT's plan from last uh, year. Uh, this is not a dramatic opening into said plan. But uh, <laughs> we actually took that, just so you know, Joe, and we gave it to the commissioner. There are a lot of good ideas on that plan. Some non-controversial, some... Uh, might be a little bit of a conversation starter, but we asked for the DOT commissioner to report back to us which of these things have been implemented, many of them hadn't been, and what their rationale was for that plan, that they literally probably spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to develop that plan. Where are we with that? So I want to thank you for bringing the plan. I did look it over. Some things, as I said earlier, were very uh, uh, common sense. Some things were... Uh, revolutionary of sorts, and uh, this will be a place where we try to have those conversations and move those things forward. Um, I also wanted to let you know, as we're getting this together, that um, there was a comment made uh, in the last meeting, and it's fine, whoever made it, it's not important, uh, with respect to the pharmacy, and I want to let you know that I went into the pharmacy, had a very good conversation with Anthony. Um, he is always thinking of different ways to promote his business, we want to have good partners with the local businesses. He actually, believe it or not, is a coach in the Little League, even though he doesn't have a kid. He's Wyatt's and, coach. Yeah, he's Wyatt's coach, uh, Beverly's son. Uh, he, is a, he actually coaches a Little League team just to give back. He has no kid on the team, but he, want, he feels very passionately about giving back to the community. And he has agreed at future meetings, we're going to have a business owner who comes in and gives, uh, you know, kind of a a little bit of an introduction to their business, he has agreed to come and be one of our future business speakers. So already, you know, we've reached out to him. He was incredibly gracious and a nice person, and we're looking forward to having him in a meeting. Um, someone brought up New York City Bikes. We have reached out to them. Uh, they are waiting on an expansion of their pilot project for New York City Bikes. So uh, some of it, I believe, requires some legislation to pass. So I'm supposed to speak to them, and we will report back on that going forward, because that's very important. Uh, also in the good news segment on transportation, how many people here, show of hands, take the bus? The big, bad, Bronx 29 bus. Okay, a pretty good showing of hands. Um, I got off the phone a little while early with somebody who's an MTA insider, and they are doing their bus redesign plans. Many of you remember we had a whole City Island contingent show up for the bus redesign plans because we wanted to have an outsized influence. And I wasn't given any uh, you know, direct uh, uh, information, but what I was told is that City Island's gonna be very happy as those plans are released at the end of the month. So we will stay consistent on that. We will stay consistent for 24 seven bus service on the hour. It's so super important. I mean, I've picked up people literally on the side of the road walking to City Island or walking back where they look dazed and confused. Uh, uh, Skip and Louise, if you guys want, we have some seats up front. So if you want to come around this way, John, go ahead. When that plan's released, will you put that on the Rising Facebook page? I will. Page? I will. Beverly asked if we could put it on the Rising Facebook page, and we absolutely will. Uh, information and sharing the information is super important. We want to democratize the process. We're not here to be gatekeepers of information. We're here to provide the information to the community, and then together, if we can build some sort of collective action to make a positive change in the neighborhood. Not a negative change, despite what you may have heard. It's all about positivity. It's about finding things that are, need to be addressed in the neighborhood and moving them forward. <clears throat> um, also, I got a uh, request from somebody actually affiliated uh, with the Legion 
and they want to do a CPR class. We have reached out to the FDNY so we can at least get that started. Uh, there were a lot of questions about uh, youth programming. I, I see Michael's here and a few others, and those are very important questions. It's, it's going to be a big thing of what we do, I'm sure, but we have reached out to the agencies that administer the grants for that to find out what the process is, and we will continue that train moving forward. I don't have a big response on that, but it is something we are working on. <clears throat> and then in, in another good news segment of this group, uh, a few of us got together. Uh, everyone's been seeing the very, very heavy rainfalls we've been having uh, throughout the neighborhood, but particularly in Pelham Bay Park. And due to a lack of adequate drainage, uh, you know, sometimes, it, it, is it Pelham Bay Park or is it Lake Isle? We don't really know. Um, just so you know, the agencies have commissioned a study to look into this. The drainage points are obviously by the circle when we come in over by Orchard Beach when you enter that way, by the hutch for many of us who get off the hutch or on the hutch. So these are things that we have, again, these are things that came out of this room. People had concerns with resiliency and okay, so we are, we are actually ready to go with our presentation here. So I will cut that one short. Um, okay, are we focused here? Are we good? And we actually have copies. If uh, we have some black yeah, and white copies, so oh good. So, so share with your neighbors. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna start here. I know it's a little small, but yeah. Let's, let's do it okay. Can we? Uh, we we're gonna work well. I'm we'll focus it out a little bit. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. I, need, I can't get You have a take a take a presentation. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So we are. So I think it's important, again, we live on an island of 4,500 people that at certain times has 9,000 plus different opinions, right? And people are saying things, you know, and they have every right to. This is a neighbor, this is a small neighborhood which presents many positives, but sometimes word of mouth travels fast. So rather than let other people define who we are, we thought we would present to you who we would like to be. And in meeting two, we're gonna do this. So rising goal number one, <laughs> is that we will be complementary, not duplicative, in efforts to strengthen the City Island community. There are an array of needs in the community that people would like to see addressed. And we hope that the addition of our group can be complementary, not duplicative, to meeting those needs. We'll, we'll listen and identify needs, then determine if something we should address on our own, or work in collaboration with another group on achieving. If existing work is already being done by another neighborhood group on that issue, we will work to inform members of the work that is being done and how they can become involved. Do you want to do number two? I'm going to hand it off to Lauren. We're going to kind of pass around the mic here so you don't have to listen to me talk the whole time. All right. So the second goal that we came up with just to set, you know, the distinguishing features of why we formed was to increase transparency and inclusion in the community development process. What does that mean? So we thought it was really important, case in point, as we're doing right now, to have these meetings live streamed. A lot of us are working late hours, sometimes we can't make it to the meetings, but it's really important to be involved. And so having it live streamed allows you the flexibility to still be involved and not miss or have to interpret what happened from someone else. Um, we also want to distribute our meeting minutes um, right after the meeting so that people know what's going on and have used technology and other platforms to make sure that people can access information that we have from going to different meetings or from being involved in different nonprofits, government organizations. Um, and then during the meetings, the steering committee is going to share out and respond to any questions on how we're making decisions on the process. So as you'll even see tonight, we're going to be any questions that are had about what's going on between meetings, after meetings, etc. We want to be here. We want to just be helping each other and not sort of leaving anyone out or leaving anyone questioning how things are, how decisions are being made. Okay, uh, <clears throat> this is a very important point. And you know, I, in, in traveling around from the meeting after the meeting, I want to say this is a neighborhood where no one holds back on how they feel. <laughs> it's one of the things I both love and hate about this place. And, you know, one thing that some people had come up to me and voiced a concern was, oh, so-and-so said this in the rising meeting, and I didn't like it. And I said, that's okay, and you have every right to disagree with someone. You have every right to have your own opinion. But we're not going to sit here and tear each other down. Other people do that. You can go other places for that. 
What we're going to do is we're going to let everyone say their point of view within two to three minutes, whatever they want to say, whatever they want to get off their chest. And if we can address it, great. If this is something that has wide-scale disagreement within the neighborhood, well, we'll bring that back, and maybe that warrants a further discussion. But the important thing here is to uphold that every voice matters in a democracy. The space we are looking to create seeks to draw on the best practices to allow everyone to speak their mind without harassment. We're not going to have, you know, we don't want yelling out in the back. When we're doing an activity, sure, you know, yell your ideas, but we don't want cross-talk, back-and-forth side comments, because that's not constructive to having people build out for a better neighborhood. So we're going to try to be better, and we're going to try not to do that. We're going to seek uh, the need for more dialogue in the community over debate. Uh, basically, what this is is that if, if, you know, look, there are third rail issues in the neighborhood. I'm not going to name what they are at the current moment, because I'm not looking to start a debate. But if I were to say, I don't know, I don't like the Christmas lights outside of Bistro SK, and someone says, I do like them. Well, we're probably not going to solve that here and now. So we're going to take that, we're going to write it down, we're going to let that person express their point of view, but we're not going to debate everything on end in this format right now because we have important things and we want to get them done. Dialogue means listening empathetically and trying to move forward, valuing all voices. Again, everyone has their two to three minutes. They should be able to speak uninterrupted. So long as you don't attack someone else who is either in the room or not present to defend themselves, you have the right to two to three minutes of everyone's time to hear what you have to say. Your voice matters in this meeting and in the community at large. And we believe the dialogue builds community. Debate in that kind of context of a back and forth does not. There are going to be issues that are controversial. I'm not, I'm not going to start saying that you know, I agree with congestion pricing, because I assume that some people in the room might not agree with congestion pricing. This, we will have those debates, we will have informed discussion. We're not, in, we're not trying to get everybody to agree to one point of view, but we're gonna try to move things forward where everyone gets to voice their point of view. If you disagree with something, you can get up after someone and say it. But let's, let's keep positive, let's focus on the issue at hand. If we attack our problems instead of each other, this is gonna be a much more productive environment for us all. Woohoo! There we go. Yeah. You wanna do this? Sure. Lauren, you want it? Oh. All right, this one's a, a lot. So we actually touched on a little of this as we were waiting to get our uh, technology up here. So what we heard last time, again, this is what you all said. So you know, if it sounds familiar, I'm gonna dart through these very quickly. Uh, disaster preparedness, possibly getting a CERT team here. Shoreline ecology rehabilitation. There are groups like the Drift that are working on this tomorrow and we'll give you a chance to speak about that in a minute. Uh, monitoring land use and zoning, that's a concern people have. Boating safety was a concern people have. An increased police presence. Uh, people here were even in meetings earlier today on that. Uh, the opioid addiction and getting people support. This is a void in the community that we're going to try to address. Uh, connecting to small business owners and providers. Uh, store vacancy is a topic throughout the city. It was on this list. Shopping local and coming up with a campaign to help shop local with the chamber and others is important. Street cleaning, obviously something people are concerned about. Uh, bike lanes, the New York City Ferry, resident parking, uh, municipal parking lot, bike share, city bike. Again, we did already put out an email on that because that was a pretty non-controversial topic. Nobody said they were anti-bike. Uh, maybe someone is, but we didn't hear that. Uh, the pickup at 175, we'll try to engage them in a dialogue. Uh, noise pollution always is something that people are concerned about. Uh, a welcoming committee, and we're going to have news on that later on. A community garden. Public access to the water, and I put this in parentheses myself. This does not mean open up all the beaches. Be Beverly, leave the camera on me. I have we are not trying to open up all the beaches. Thank you. That way there's no misinformation. If it said, I said it right on camera here. This is about pursuing public access to the water, and there are projects that we can work together to try to pursue, to enhance, to elevate, to, to allow an, a, a public access if, if it's warranted. And again, if the community doesn't want it, then we don't do it. But we wanted to put that in there. Um, activities for young people. This is something a lot of people touched on, that there is not a lot for the young adult crowd, and trying to find things and maybe do things together and invite them so that they feel that they're a part of the community. <coughs> Cultural events, we're very open to this. I think we're gonna to try to do a lot of this through our welcoming committee and to support diversity. Uh, you know, again, change is not always a bad thing and City Island looks different today than it did 20 or 30 years ago. 
And we need to create an environment where no matter who you are, what you look like, the color of your skin, your sexual orientation, what have you, it almost has no, it, it doesn't have any bearing on your value in this community. Whether you've been here 45 years or 45 minutes, you count just as much as everybody else. And that is something we are gonna try to take forward here. So this is everything we heard last time. Move into the back for the baby. Sure. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so we have some seats up here if people want to sit down. So going going back to this slide, uh, you know, one of, one of the hard things was taking all of this input and figuring out how that translates to action. And uh, in order to do that, one of the things we wanted to do is distill this down to some very clear principles that we want to support as an organization. So that that's what this is. These are four pillars that we think can help define uh, not necessarily our goals, but just things that we have heard the community is interested in. And if we use these as our, as our guidelines or our, sort of our touchstones, uh, we think these can be containers for what we're going to do next. So I'm, I'm not going to read these. They're, they're in big font. And uh, we'll, we'll share these slides afterwards. So anybody who wants a copy of these slides, just read send them. us an email. Read them. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, so safety and environmental resilience, uh, livability and transportation alternatives, promoting and sustaining local business, and strengthening community connections. So, you know, if we think about those four things writ large, those are things that if we all contribute, we can really make the community a better place. And that's what we're all here for at the end of the day. John, you got a thumbs up from the live stream. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. So here's what here's what we want to do next. These are the things that the steering committee met, wrote down everything that we heard in this last meeting, and said, how do we approach these? And one of the best parts about this organization, I think, is the self knowledge enough to know that we're not going to be able to do all this by ourselves. So we want to work with the other organizations on this island, City Island Drift. We want to work with City Island Indivisible. We want to work with City Island Civic Association. We want to work with the Chamber of Commerce. We want to work with the Legion. And there's no reason why anybody should be at odds. We all want the same thing, which at the end of the day is for this community to be better than it's ever been. And so that, that, that's, that's what it's all about. So I'll, I'll go through some of these things. Some of these things are going to be happening in future meetings. Some of these things are going to be happening kind of behind the scenes with the steering committee, and I encourage anyone who wants to contribute some more of their time, because that's what we're asking for, if they want to help out the steering committee, or if they want to raise their hand and say, hey, that looks really cool, this is what to focus on. This is the area where you can volunteer and you can be a part of what's next. So uh, we're looking to host the captain of the 45th precinct at a future meeting. Uh, we're investigating how to get cert training for the community, which I think is amazing. Uh, I think almost everyone here has probably lived through uh, at least one hurricane or a super storm or whatever. And I think there's no reason why we shouldn't take advantage of some of the resources that might be available to us to get more trained as a community to how to handle those situations. Uh, we're looking, uh, we're working with agencies examining the drainage at Pelham Bay Park. Uh, and we're going to host uh, the OEM at a future meeting. I think uh, you're going to watch these meetings evolve. Yeah, I think we have a question in the back. What is sure? Uh, John? Please explain all Community <laughs> Emergency <laughs> Response Team. And while you're at it, OEM? OEM is the Office of Emergency Management. I come from a city background. I use a lot of acronyms. I'm always happy to explain those things. They were put on here, not to make myself sound somehow smarter, more important than you all, but as you see, we were in the need for space, and it was easier to do it that way. And just, so CERT, what it does is it trains people before the emergencies. So in essence, in a catastrophe, you know, when all of the CERT members get together and they, they uh, function as captives for oh. certain areas of the community. Yeah. And because City Island is actually, um, City Island is exactly what we wanted for because we're a mile and a half by three blocks. Mm -hmm. So if you had 20 people that were trained in CERT, you literally have every person on every of other block trained in order to figure out. And, and that's not just sort of a yellow vest that you wear, right? That, that could be, there's a lot of people who are homebound on this island. There are a lot of people who might need some help uh, at the very least, getting information about how to get off the island in a disaster. Uh, it could be a lifesaver, frankly, uh, especially for some folks who might need medical assistance. So I, I, I'm, I'm really excited about the CERT uh, designation. I, I think, you know, if we can get some volunteers, uh, we'll absolutely connect folks who want to be a part of that. And I'm sure there'll be people on this committee who are going to be part of it as well. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be great. It's a good question. Um, 
All right, uh, over here we're planning to host a senior official from the Department of Transportation at a future neighborhood meeting. Uh, seasonal service projects, strong support of the Gateway Project. There's been a lot of controversy, I think, on social media outlets about opening up the beaches. I think that's a real misinterpretation of what we stand for and what we believe in. At the end of the day, there's opportunities on this island, and there's actually a group right now focusing on changing some of the property that's right next to the bridge. I think you're all familiar with it. Uh, to make that uh, potentially a way for folks to launch a kayak or even just to sit by the water. Uh, you know, we're, we... We're very lucky to be on the water, but it's funny, you can, you can live a block away from the water and have no access to it. So uh, it's a great way, I think, to get the community onto the water. Uh, and I, I'm a big believer in this, this quadrant right here. Uh, I'm a business person. I, I, I hate seeing all the empty storefronts here, and I hate seeing uh, the lack of support for business on this island. Uh, you know, Growing up, there was a lot more business on the island, and it seems like every year it's steadily declining, and I think we as a community, we have to take it on ourselves to be a part of the solution there. And that's shopping local, that's highlighting businesses that we love, that's sharing that on social media, but it's really supporting our local businesses like Clipper Coffee, who's been very kind to us as well. Yeah. And um, real quick, this is Stephanie. Um, thank you for having us, Stephanie and Ben. Sorry, Ben, are you working? We say the same thing every time. You should uh, either put a dollar on the tip thing, or you should buy a coffee because they're wonderful enough to have us at no charge. Yeah, so tip tip heavily. That's my advice. Yes. Thank you. Um, so yeah, we're we're going to be brainstorming some ideas about local small business promotions. Shop local stamps. We have an idea of like a stamp book where you can stamp. And then if you shop at enough businesses, you get something. I don't know. We're, we're still working on that. Uh, I, I've got a crazy idea with Dan about maybe starting up a YouTube channel where we can just do some video content around businesses in the neighborhood. I think that would actually go a really long way. We're going to have it by next week. We're gonna we're gonna have it. Dan and I uh, will be behind the camera. We're like the uh, the new video duo of City Island. So it's gonna be really exciting. Uh, and then, oops, up. That, uh, uh, and then we're gonna work with businesses on uh, on on cleanup generally. I think that's one of the challenges we hear a lot in different avenues. That whether you're a big restaurant or a small business. Obviously, the avenue is a very well-trafficked uh, street during the summer, and let's partner together to figure out how we can keep it clean. I, I think it's going to be important. And then lastly, uh, John talked about forming a welcoming committee. Uh, we're going to be making some announcements about that soon. We've got some folks who are volunteering, and I would encourage that's a great way to get involved because that's a great way to meet your neighbors. That's a great way to sort of make people feel like they're not outsiders. They're part of our community and their neighbors. So I encourage everyone to volunteer for that once it forms. Uh, and then the bulletin board is up, uh, the world famous bulletin board, uh, and I encourage everyone to post stuff on it and to read stuff on it. Where is it? Uh, it's on the corner. Uh, it's, it's on the fence on the corner of Scofield Street. There's the thing. That's next to my place. I mean, and Dan set it up, so let's give Dan a round. Yeah, good work, Dan. <laughs> um, if anyone's a better builder than I am, I'd like to put like a tiny wine if we're alive. Uh, um, but we have uh, we have sleeves. So you can just feel free, you don't ask, just put things on it. If you see something on there that's outdated, just take it down. It's not, it's not so, uh, okay. And then uh, we've got some ideas for some community service projects. I think community service generally and youth activities seem like they fit really well. And I think there's an idea there where we can get the youth involved uh, on this island in making a positive change. I think that would really help the whole island. Um, so these are the things we're working on. Some are obviously closer to actual formation and uh, being tangible. And some of them are just ideas that Dan and I email each other at late at night. So it's, uh, hopefully we'll have more information about them soon. Yeah, we got a question. What do you mean exactly public access? What is what? Sure. Yeah, I, I can sure. take that. Yeah. So uh, the idea with that space, I don't know if you're familiar with it. There, there's a space right when you come over the bridge, and to your right, there's Catherine Scott Promenade with all the benches, and it's really pretty, but there's a big old fence, and obviously for safety, and no one's getting to the water from there. But to the left of the bridge, there's an area that was used during the construction of the bridge. It's now vacant. Um, and uh, they've actually done a really nice job of uh, just cleaning it up and making it sort of a flat parcel of land. Um, so there's been a group that, predating even the bridge construction, I believe. Yeah, it, and it's city-owned property, which is city important. City-owned property, which is important. Yeah. Uh, so the idea there, and I, I don't know if there's anything more specific than saying, 
let's make that some form of land that people can get into the water. We in no way want to touch the beaches, the beach clubs, anything that exists that already exists as a way for people to get to the water. I grew up on the island. I, I spent my summers walking barefoot from King Avenue over to the Bound Street Beach, and that's not there anymore. And that's actually what I want to prevent. I want to make sure that the beaches don't go away. I want to make sure that the beaches exist as they've always existed, and we're sort of used by the people who are going to be using them. This is additive. It's complementary. We don't want to take anything away. Yeah, I, th I think that's a really good question. And, and those are the things that we're going to be working on and I think sharing more details on. I don't know if anybody here has answers to that. I can pass the mic if they do. Uh, but that's something in the spirit of transparency we're going to be. The, the old, whatever, the old worm right? yeah, yeah. So, so in essence, it's not our project. But we are stating that as an organization so far, we support those people who are making educated decisions about those things. That's not, we, we are not, that, that's not our decision. Okay. That's the gateway project. We are just stating that we are in support of that organization doing that. So, they will, they will, we, they are invited. Dan, so Dan, so um, so uh, I'll get to this in a minute. But I'm I'm a nonprofit lawyer, and I've been working with the Gateway Project to get them up and running, so that they can be in a position to, and and this is the idea, right? None of this has happened, but this is the the concept: is is that the city will give can give to a not for profit organization a long term lease for a dollar, ten dollars, what have you, in order that that nonprofit organization then develop the land for a public purpose. And so that's that's the idea, that's what they're working toward. Um, I think that, you know, for, from our perspective, that sounds like a great idea if people can, um, if, if city islanders can have a space, and the idea behind the gateway is that it's going to be very, very participatory. Right? Their whole structure is based around having input from other community groups and different constituencies so that um, we're listening to the business community and we're thinking about school children and we're thinking about um, uh, the uh, veterans and, and military community. All of that is part of the way that they're set up so that this facility, and again, that's not ours. I just happen to have had some conversations with them. Um, that, that that organization is going to carry forward what the community wants to do with that space. And part of what they believe that space could be important in doing is creating a more solid connection between islanders and our local ecology um, on East Chester Bay. OK? Um, yes, yep, one specific space, that particular area. And it's in keeping with our nautical heritage. So that's something we else we want to build on, right? Like we have the drift now, and, and again, the chamber and other organizations have been big on you know, preserving the nautical history of City Island. I mean, we actually have a nautical museum. Mm -hmm. So it seems to be something City Island is prioritizing. This is one way. But to, to, the, to the woman in the back of the room who asked the question, because it is a good question, I don't want you to feel that something being discussed here, and I think this is a misconception we all have, over decades in the, uh, in the past, is that something discussed in one of these meetings is somehow, you, the next time you're gonna see this project is gonna be in the end zone and it's gonna be done and you're gonna have no say. Trust, just, just, just if I could miss, just if, if that project comes to fruition and we're, we're taking steps to be supportive of it because we happen to believe in it, if you don't, I respect your point of view, but you will have just as much of a voice as I would have or anyone here would have at a public meeting, it has to go through a universal land use review project. That, that's all we're saying. I go ahead. The, the, uh, plans for this. I think Susan, uh, uh, Balancing, yes. At Linda Baldwin uh, as well. At least maybe two years ago, mm -hmm. at the uh, Civic Association. Sure. It's a great plan. I mean, mm -hmm. it's terrific. Yeah. But I was wondering why it's taking so long. Sh the one thing I saw, though, was that 
you're saying more environmental and nautical. Mm -hmm. That wasn't so much presented. It was almost as if people felt it was going to be an amusement park. Or, oh, yeah. And, and that, mm -hmm. I, I don't think Susan ever wanted. No, no, I, I don't think I so either. The plan. So, yeah. I, again, I think this is a long time. 100% to answer your question of why this is taking so long is Tudor Perini is operating out of that site for the bridge. So there has been no lease on that property for forever. And there is, believe it or not, most of the land, uh, the building trader John used to, to have, the worm bar, the, or the worm temple, as some of us come to know it, because they at one point they lost their liquor license and had all the bartenders ordained ministers to give out uh, alcohol. And that's actually a true story. I didn't make that up. Uh, that building, believe it or not, he built that building on what the DOT considers their property, an unmapped street. So there has been this whole, and again, I, I feel bad because none of us are here authorized to speak for the Gateway Project. We're just giving you the information. Right. But this whole thing has been built on the fact that he thought he owned some land. People, the city departments can't get on the same, couldn't get on the same page who owned the land. And it really, almost, the project was taking off towards 2014, 2015. All the elected officials were supportive of the concept. The chamber was supportive. Other organizations were supportive. But the project kind of had to be put on hold because of the bridge reconstruction. So I think this is going to be a big part of City Island going forward uh, in terms of having those discussions. And I don't want you to feel like you missed anything. Nothing has really changed because we haven't had any further discussions because Tudor Perini is operating under there. But as we can all see, because we have to leave here almost every day, some of us, the, the bridge is wrapping up. So that land is what we're going to, we as a community need to figure out what we want to do with that land. And as somebody who has you know, been in the public sector for many years and in nonprofit roles, I will say what I sense from the community, and this is my sense, I'm not speaking for everybody, but what I hear is that people don't want another restaurant. People don't want you know, large scale or dense housing there, they, they, but they would be open to something that maybe was preserving our heritage and our environment. Now again, this is not something, and, and I appreciate the questions because you've actually asked a lot of really thoughtful questions. I think that this is just one concept that we as a group collectively have been supporting, but we will invite them as they come down the pike with, with new information because Beverly's really working hard to help them in terms of getting them recognized in terms of a nonprofit capacity. We will have them come back here and present in the rooms. So that way people are getting their questions answered directly and not third person, but I, I'm, ex I'm expressing the information as I know it to be, and I will tell you that the people who are working towards making that a reality, Linda, Beverly, other people, they're your neighbors. And you know nobody's trying to sell out City Island here. We're all living here, nobody's going anywhere. Uh, Steve. Uh, is there a website or internet that shows what the Gateway Project actually is? Not yet. Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll try to collect some of the information and we'll put it on the Rising Facebook page. So the nice thing about the video is now I'm on the record having to do those things. <laughs> That's another positive. It adds more work for me. Miss. Okay, you talk about the kayak launching pad and a beach. Bus, Possibly. Which would mean that everybody from the Bronx could use it? Or would be just you know, that, that would have to be determined later on into the fact that, you know, I feel bad because Linda was here at our last meeting, She's not, she couldn't make it to this meeting, and, you know, this is all conceptual right now. When we get down to, you know, uh, the meat and potatoes of the subject, you know, it's not going to be anyone can go on there to any portion at night. Of course, there's probably going to have to be a fence and it's going to have to be closed, and I think what they're envisioning is that there will be a resident advisory committee made up of people like John, who live near there, who, uh, like my aunt too, both my aunts, so if anything bad happens there, I'm going to hear about it a lot. Um, <laughs> but they are going to be there and a part of that committee to flesh out some concerns people have about safety and security. No one's looking just to you know, open something up without any sort of uh, community input. Right. And you know, this project, again, it's in its conceptual stage, but it is moving forward. Ben, I see your, there's a dramatic rendering there. Was that a question? Or were you, a question. Go well, for it. How would we put community input into the Gateway Project? Well, as, as Beverly, who is an expert non-for-profit attorney, she won't say that herself, but I can say that, uh, they are building a process that values community input from the start. So 
again, there will be an advisory committee. There will have to be, I'm guessing, public meetings. Yeah. Actually, so why don't I let the smarter person talk about this? Well, yeah, so yeah. I, I, think probably, yeah, I think probably at this point, you know, John's made the point that like, we are sort of describing a project that's not our project. Um, so I think maybe we should put this on the agenda. Maybe let's see if Linda can make it in, in June. Sure. I want to segue into this because I want to be cognizant of time and it's 8.30. So I think this is a great topic for one of our next <coughs> meetings. And, and then Linda Baldwin, who's heading up this project, can, can describe where they're at and where they're going and what conversations they've had so far. Does that sound okay to everybody? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. That way we can get you some answers. Awesome. Okay. Uh, we're actually going to do a, a quick 20-minute Q&A before we do some quick committee reports because we want to break down. Everybody's got an index card. So if you don't get called in the Q&A, and we're going to try to keep the Q&A fast moving. Uh, Dan, do you want to be a part of this? Are you okay over there? You're fine? All right. So Beverly and I, I guess, can do the Q&A because it's always good for me to have somebody who's smart. smart. My handwriting is terrible. That's the only thing. Yeah, actually, if you could, that'd be great. So we're just going to do this. This is... Basically a form of new business. Are there things that you didn't see in the PowerPoint? By the way, if you gave a suggestion at the first meeting and you didn't see it in the PowerPoint, as I said, there was 112 suggestions. We sat together two and a half hours. We got through 77 of them. So we didn't get through everything, but we will. And we will get back to you. So if you, if that, I just want to put that out there in new business now, that if you did not have your particular concern addressed, I think by the end of the next meeting, if not definitely the following meeting, we will have a breakdown sheet. This was your suggestion. Here's what we did with it. Because transparency and openness matters to everybody. And some of them are going to be, this warrants further discussion. Yeah. You know, if you, uh, go so ahead. Maybe we should put up as the first thing, what's going on with the gateway? Yes. Okay. Just a question for follow-up. Question, yeah. Okay. Uh, does anyone have, uh, Ms. Ms. Blackman, you had your hand up earlier. What, what do you want to add? Like some community support. Okay. Versus having off islanders using this facility, which should be designated for city islander use. Okay. Now, secondary mm -hmm. to that, because a lot of the people who will be using this facility might come from the southern end of the island. Uh -huh. You can't quite walk there or I see the mic. Would have to take the car. Should the other mic, Dan? Can we, get, can we give out the other mic to people as they have uh, questions? Can get it so far. Okay, I just want everyone to be able to hear your, your point of view, that's all. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, he, he, he's saying he wants a, uh, Mr. Blankman, if I could just paraphrase you a little bit, but we got it on video. Mr. Blankman is saying that if it does come to fruition, he would like to see it be selective in terms of who or that islanders get a preference. Is that an accurate characterization of what you said? I would, I would say a preference, but I think okay. to eliminate all islanders. Oh, okay. All, okay. all right, I, I saw some. Oh, they, you know, in the four points that you made, that nothing, yeah. nothing was spoken about uh, about the drug problem that we have on City Island. That that's a very good case, and I was actually going to bring this up a li little later on. I know that we had the yeah. we had the NALCON training. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's still going on, but maybe you know we could yeah. do one at this meeting or have someone. We, I know opioid. Oh, hold on one second. No, no, I just say people outside, you might want to bring them in. Oh, if people outside want to come in further, we have some room There's up here. Seats up front. There's a couple of seats. We don't want people standing outside, even though they can probably watch it on their phones. But if you're here, we want you to be able to hear our actual voices. Um, but to answer, I believe, yeah, in safety, there was what we heard last time. It said opioid addiction support. This is, and I work at Jacoby, and we will bring in people if necessary. This is a complicated topic, and I'm glad you brought this up. We're not all sure what this solution is going to be. We're looking around right now to see what sort of either, you know, kind of uh, community-based efforts we can be a part of, like the Narcan training, which is great. Chris Hennessy does that. Dorian Gallagher does that. 
There's, um, there's, there's other groups that do that. And TNCAP, Frogsnet Community Action Partnership does that. It's very important. We're gonna do more with it. Just so everyone knows, um, I have to sit on the 45th Precinct Council. And I was with the captain yesterday at our breakfast where Luis was honored right up here. Congratulations, Luis. There we go. That was not a shameless plug. The reason I bring it up is the captain pulled me aside because I asked him about opioids. And he said, as of while we were sitting in the room at the, at the breakfast, there was not a single narcotics complaint open on City Island. At this point, at this point right now. That's what he said. So we, and this, I'm glad this actually came up now, we need to be proactive about complaining effectively. And you know, we all, look, it, it, it's a problem here. It'd be, it'd be ludicrous to deny it's a problem. But we need to complain effectively to the police. So please, if you have a complaint, I know some of us feel that if we tell our neighbor or we, you know, if, if we kind of share it with someone else, that that's effective. There is no one, you should, everyone should go to the police to share the problem because this is an under-policed area. We all know that at the 45th Precinct. We don't have the manpower we need. Manpower is determined by police activity. Police activity is determined by the complaints they get. So when I see a neighborhood like ours where there are no complete complaints open, and I think the captain is a good and honest man, I don't think he was lying to me. But when I see something like that is open, and I know that there are issues with that, and again, law enforcement's not the only solution to the opioid problem, but it's an important part of it. What that leads me to believe is that our complaints are not being effectively brought back, or people are not complaining effectively, and there are a variety of reasons for that. But again, if you have a complaint, you know, what we'll do, and I'll make sure this goes out in the email, we'll put out uh, the Bronx narcotics number in an e-blast that we do. So people, because again, it's about complaining effectively. Uh, and you in the red, I'm sorry. I don't know your name and I can't read it over here. Hi, uh, how do we volunteer? Okay. That's really it. Any initiatives you have coming up, how can we say, I want to help? Come up to us, tell us you want to help, we'll put you on a list, and then uh, you will hear more from us than you ever wanted to. Um, one of the other things um, that I want to stress is that, um, you know, we don't believe that law enforcement is the only solution to a substance abuse epidemic that we have. Um, I'm really hoping that one of the things that comes out of this community work and getting to know our neighbors even better is, is that when we see something, we say something, that we support each other. Maybe we can put um, some help lines both for substance abuse and also mental health on the bulletin board so that they're out there for everybody to see. If you see somebody who needs help, here's, here's where you can call. Um, and you know we need, to, we need to pay attention to our neighbors and we need to support our neighbors when they need help. That's great. Go ahead. Yeah, if you're going in this direction, my understanding is if you could do something with the youth, more activities, or some center for them where they could have some feeling of being wanted in this community, the less we do for them, the more they'll be on going wild with mm -hmm. drugs. That's how I've seen it. Ab absolutely, absolutely. My son so. is only seven, um, but there's already, you know, there are some tremendous youth organizations on City Island, and we support those outlets, whether it's Little League or Scouts or what have you, but there's there's a much greater need for more. And there's, yeah, and there's, and there's a, a really great need for, for kids as, as they get older, and so that's definitely on, on our on our list. And, and we did, we are putting together an inquiry to the Department of Youth and Community Development, which is a city agency, to see what resources they have available, because you're right. And, you know, if we can get together a couple thousand dollars and work with the community centers, Beverly says, there's a lot of great people out there doing things. If we can work with them and we can do some sort of a program down there, I'll donate a few hours. That's something that's very meaningful to me. I mean, look, I think we all know someone here or indirectly affected by somebody who either has really grappled with addiction or isn't around with us today. So I definitely agree it's one of City Island's biggest problems. There is no perfect solution for it. It's gonna be a multi-pronged approach. And I, I appreciate Beverly uh, speaking out and reminding me it's not just a law enforcement approach because it's 100% right. But we are we're working towards a solution. We don't have it yet, but I think a lot of it is what Beverly said, what Lauren said, a few other people, and it's gonna be support for people who are supporting people who are grappling with that medical issue. And also, just a point of information, we do have, uh, and I don't even wanna say it's underutilized, I wanna say that people are unaware. Um, we do have a community center here um, that, that, you know, that, that we can do more with. So part of what we're 
part of what we're trying to do is um, create an outlet where people can have conversations or, or just centralize information so that um, while there are a lot of things going on, um, people don't know what's going on and if we figure out a better way to communicate with each other. Um, yeah, and I, and I wanted to add to that. I think that's a great point because it is underutilized and it's not underutilized because we're not using it. I think a, a void sometimes is people aren't volunteering to teach a class or to share their passions or share their knowledge. I think if we look at it as a problem we can all solve together step by step, those are the kinds of things we can all be involved in as a community. And sure. we've also been endlessly discussing skill shares. So if I, if, if like in my household, not having, like we have two kids in the school, right? And in my household, not having art in the school is not an issue because they, our kids live it, right? Because they're surrounded by stuff all the time. However, when we want to better our island, I should be teaching an art class. Now I'm not yet, but that's part of what the dialogue becomes is if we're good in art, how do we do that? What, how do we entertain the children? And if he's good at politics, how does he get the kids engaged in his world? Or, or not just kids, anybody who needs any activity to do. Um, well, doesn't the city, can, can't the city provide a counselor through well, the community center or through something of that should, nature? We would love for you I, to work on that. Yeah, why, why don't we speak afterwards? I, I just, I have to say, Dan, hit, Dan kind of touched on this a little bit. For many years, uh, Brenda and Patty Grondel have been leading the uh, community center. They do a great job. They're begging for people to come in and share their talents and do good stuff. I think this is where maybe we step in, and again, government is something that I know pretty well, and we look at what resources are available, and is City Island applying for its fair share, right? And if not, we have people here. Lauren's got skills with grant writing. Beverly's an attorney. Yeah, we've all got different skills we can give, and this is where maybe a new group can fill that void in terms of programming. Because we're not going to go out there and try to be the police. No, no. <laughs> we're going to go out there and we're going to try to approach this from a different angle. And I think what Joanne touched a little on the public health angle, and you've touched a little on youth programming, they're both essential in combating this. Hand in the, uh, actually, Miss, if you wouldn't mind, I just want to get a few other people, but I will promise to answer your question. Caitlin, oh, go first. Oh, I just wanted to say, because um, we're yeah. discussing the opioid epidemic, and there is a lot of outreach uh, in the community, uh, such as 12 step programs. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I've spoken to at PS 175 on addiction to sixth, seventh, and eighth graders because I believe that's the age. Thank you for that. Let's give her a round of applause. That, that's actually helpful. Uh, I, I am uh, well rounded and not on the family struggling with addiction. So if anyone has a loved one that's struggling um, with drug addiction, opioid addiction, or any type of addiction, please speak to me. I can you know help. You. That's great. That's thank, great. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That might be the best thing I've said this whole meeting. So far. Thank you for that. That was that was an answer, not a question. So we'll move on to another question we have here. Uh, Miss, I'm going to get to you. I just want to. Did it, Raina, go ahead. I I just want to just point out as a business owner that um, Patty's just closed, and um, I know we were talking about four vacancies. And I just, wow. I'm hoping something can be done with landlords that are charging rent that's way too high. I mean, I don't know if it's accurate, but I heard that the landlord's charging $7,500 for that space. And um, I don't know if somebody can find that out, but. Um, I know that for sure. Yeah, do you want to say? No, it's not accurate. I just did. Okay. No, so, it's not accurate. It's okay. not accurate? He's can, saying it's not. Okay. The president of the chamber is saying can it's we, not accurate. Can we ask? Can we find that, that information? Yeah, is that part of the problem? Is that part of the problem? Go ahead. Is, what, what is the problem? Do you know? The, the problem is that it's just there are not, no. Don't give me a okay. The problem is there is not enough of a market to support the number of bars. He doesn't want the city. He doesn't want the mic. Okay. The problem is there is not enough of a market to support the number of bars on City Island. He said there's not enough of a market to support the number of bars on City Island for those in the back of the right. room. And something has to close. And something has to yeah. close. Oh, okay. And we are, let's, we will, I, we will try to find who the property owner is and, and reach out to them. I will say Skip and I worked very hard a few years back to get all the vacant property owners into a room. And only two, sh and we sent out letters. Yes. We did phone calls. I think Skip actually borderline harassed some of them. I'm not putting you on the spot with that. But you worked very hard. Yeah, you worked very hard with me to, to make that happen. And only, again... Two people showed up. So we have we have an issue here as well where we need the property owners to step up too. And we, sometimes, again, as, as someone touched on earlier, it's eBay, it's the online sentiment here. It's, you know, people are shopping more and more online. People get in the car, they go to mega marts or things like that. And 
you know, we do need an effort to shop local. So that's what, you know, I know John wants to do and Dan and, you know, we are going to try to do something to support our local businesses. Uh, miss in the back there. Uh, one in front of you and then and then you, because you've been very patient. I do appreciate that. And and does this gentleman want to ask a question first? So we'll do one, two, three. Sir. Yeah, so that's a great question, and one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to move the location of the meeting so that it it's going to be more convenient for some people on some days and less convenient for others on other days. We're going to move it around um, to various places. Um, we're also going to move it um, to different days. We're live streaming so that um, everybody can uh, either watch the meeting at home if they can't attend in person or catch up on it later. Um, one of the things that we think is really important is not conflicting with other um, community organizations and other things that folks have going on. So, um, you know, that's, that's moving the location is definitely part of that as well. And, and honestly, it ended up here um, uh, besides supporting one of the two newest businesses on City Island was um, we wanted it to be centrally located so that people who happen to be walking around could walk by and see the, well actually two people. We wanted it so that people who happen to be walking by could see it and entertain the idea of possibly walking in, not that that's an easy thing to do. Um, and two, um, it's important, at least uh, business-wise, um, that when people drive down City Island Avenue on a night, they see something besides a restaurant that's open. Because um, if, we're, if, if our pitch is that we are a community organization, um, part of the deal is that we want to get people together in multiple locations so that they can maybe meet somebody they wouldn't normally meet. That being said, we love the community center and it's incredibly important. Great. Um, to the person with the blonde curls. Sorry, I don't know your name. I'm Marie. Hi, Marie. Uh, I've been here about a year almost. Thank you for uh, coming. I love it. Uh, my, uh, my curiosity and question is, uh, looking at the storefronts and hearing properties and all around and who owns what, how many property owners that own storefronts actually live here? I mean, that to me says a lot about how much mm -hmm. they're invested and what yeah. they're willing to do. Uh, this is a great question, and again, it's something Skip and I worked on. What I found in the work we did is that, and Maria actually is in the real estate community, and she's sitting right behind her, and she does a lot of work on this, is that some of them do, some of them definitely do, and you have what I call on some of the properties, for lack of a better term, uh, the inheritance, the legacy inheritance, where these people yes. pass, the property passed through the family, the person doesn't really make an effort on it because eventually they're going to sell and this is their retirement egg, so to speak. So uh, these people, they're not dependent on these properties primarily for their income. So they're willing to wait around for a class A tenant, sometimes a chain, sometimes other things, to come through that is, uh, you know, they're willing to wait, unfortunately. And, you know, some of them live here. I'm not going to start naming names because then, you know, I'm going to get people showing up on my doorstep and they're not going to be too happy, but I can have an offline conversation with you about it. But most of them, I would say... Most live here. Most, she, Maria's saying most. She's in the real estate market, so I'm going to defer to an expert there. And that's one of the reasons why it's so incredibly important when a landlord does decide to rent to a tenant like the coffee shop, that we 100% get in there and support that and say, yes, this community is behind this. Um, we want we want this kind of activity to be, you know, populating our storefronts and lighting up our, our street. Um, and Second part just, yeah. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Um, I don't know, I can't remember what state it was in, but there, were, there was recently a state in which a particular city had uh, dollar store, stores, they had the dollar stores, and 11 of them in one town. I don't know if anybody's heard of this NPR. Yeah. 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 And um, there was no grocery store. And so someone stepped up and became a representative and put in an ordinance. She fought until she got an ordinance that said they had to put a cap on the amount of dollar stores yep. so that because they were they, they were grabbing all the produce. Yes. Yeah. I was I was recently working on a ballot initiative in Liberty, Missouri and they were working on getting something similar on their on their ballot. Right. Um, so what would be great, would you mind finding that article and then putting it onto the Facebook page so we can all see it and read okay. it? That so would be great. It was, it was, it was, it was okay. on NPR this morning. It's not Tulsa. 
Okay. Yes. okay. Cool. Let's cool. let's get that and post Perfect. it. Yeah. And I'll speak to you after the fact. Yes. Maybe we okay. Can... And I think we have time for one last question. Uh, we have this is not a question. I'm a mental health clinician. Oh, I great. On City Island, um, for five years or whatever. But I'm um, the director of um, mental health clinicians that are licensed. Interns. We work with uh, Iona, Concordia, and one of the things that I've always wondered about is the drug problem. How do we, maybe we have to knock on doors, to get the uh, parents involved so that even if they don't have a child who's uh, of age yet to be so involved with drugs, that we need to get the 10-year-olds, the 11-year-olds, uh, the 8-year-olds, the before they get Yep. Uh, and it sounds like Caitlin's doing that kind of work now. So um, not to put you on the spot, Caitlin, but maybe we can line you up for a future meeting to talk about some ideas um, about ways that the community can get involved. That and kind and of my interns could come on the island. We would sure. love to have them. That's great. Awesome. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Let's talk. Great idea. Where um, the Grace Cafe. Yeah. She's here. I can believe. It. That's great. Yeah. yeah. So if we, be, if we can just get together. Yeah. The younger, uh, again, not the seven, six-year-old, five-year-old, mm -hmm. but they call them preteens, teens, if we can <laughs> yeah. do something like that. And then, great. as uh, with my people, we can come out and get other people involved. Yeah. Wonderful. That sounds great. great. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Any other questions before we close out of this segment? Okay. So we're Thanks, going to, everybody. Oh, no, no, we said that. No, that was great. Yeah, question in the back, back. sorry. Last question in the back, and then we're going to hold on to each other. The drainage from the city island from the Palomay. Yes. Is that for traffic reasons, you're saying? No, 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 but it does fall under DOT and under the Parks Department. They're doing a study right now just on Shore Road. It's been very well documented in the press, but they haven't been looking at these other problem areas by the Horse Stable, by the Circle, by Orchard Beach, by Turtle Cove. So we. Uh, we can definitely ask. I know it. They spend hours. Of they do. At City Island, we yeah. cancel like half our games because it, it, it's just puddles and they're just getting drained. Like, yeah. It's uh, all the City Island games together. Mm -hmm. Great game, you know. Can, can we speak afterwards? Because what I want to do is I know that some of the elected officials get member items and money along those lines, and one of the things they always love to give to because it's very popular and it's also the right thing to do, is the Little Leagues, because what really is needed there is probably some sort of drainage, and they do do that on many fields. So let's let's make sure you are speaking to the right people, because that's the most important thing, is to connect people to people who can help. Sometimes, I, trust me, if I had $200,000, I'd try to help fix the Little League, among other topics that I'd probably be interested in. But uh, that is something we have to do. We're gonna move on with the, did someone have one last question before we moved on? No, okay. So we're going to do committee reports right now, and the first committee, believe it or not, is Beverly to talk about the governance committee. Great. Thanks, I'm not going to... Um, I'm going to have to skip out after this because I've actually got a meeting. Um, so one of the things that's really important um, to us, um, to me, um, in, in setting up this organization is to make sure that we're doing it right legally. Um, I'm a lawyer, so I'm a little biased in, for, in favor of that. So, um, so far we've gotten incorporated. So City Island Rising is a not-for-profit, New York not-for-profit corporation. Um, and uh, we're working on setting up our internal governance documents, um, bylaws and whatnot, so that we can apply for 501c3 status, so that um, contributions to the organization can be exempt from federal taxation. And um, we can be in a better position to receive certain things like grants and whatnot um, uh, that uh, that are given to not-for-profit organizations. So, um, you know, I will be chiming in from time to time on governance issues like keeping appropriate minutes and whatnot. Um, uh, so if anybody has any questions or concerns in that area, I'm happy to chat. Um, and um, I will uh, keep everybody posted as we move forward toward um, uh, consolidating the, the sort of boring business end of, of things and, and um, my one of my jobs is to make sure that we're crossing all our T's and dotting all our I's to make sure that we have a sound sound governance footing for the organization. Boring. <laughs> I, again, she, she doesn't like to toot her own horn so I can say that my job. Beverly is an expert legal attorney and, and again she does this for the ASPCA. So if we, they, not that they're supporting this organization.
But if we were to pay for this type of expertise, we would be in the hundreds of dollars mark an hour, and she's doing it for free. So this is really important, it's very good. And Beverly has helped many organizations. I, again, I said earlier, I'm on the precinct council. When we needed to be nonprofit, who helped us? Beverly. Uh, you know, when the Gateway needed help to get their stuff in order to make it legal, who do they go to? Beverly. So we are getting help with this. She's providing an extraordinary amount of help. Again, we all jumped right into this. This wasn't expected that we would do this this year. And I'm gonna use an analogy here. It's kind of like, you know, everyone here knows Senator Biagi. She just got in. What she's saying is that we're building the plane as we're flying the plane. Like, that's very similar to here. We're having meetings right now to address community concerns, but pretty soon we're gonna need a governance document. And if we wanna do things related to the opioids and programming, we need a non-for-profit conduit to do those things. Uh, the Drift people were here, are here, N Nancy's here, other people here, and they, they work with the museum, but it would be mu it's much easier to do this if you have one on your own. And that is what we are trying to do here. So thank you, Beverly, for that, and thank you for all your work. Um, I'll do the next one. So we did a, um, Dan and I uh, stood with Assemblyman Benedetto. Uh, did everyone here, is anyone here familiar with the speed cameras and the speed camera initiative? Basically, there were 100 speed cameras at the beginning of this year, and Albany, this all, everything in New York City, even if it's still with the speed limit, has to go through Albany. And Assemblyman Benedetto is in a very good position up there. He's the chairman of the Education Committee. Before that, he was chairman of the Cities Committee. And he, he was out here with Dan and myself. Obviously, Dan has kids in the school, and he is given a commitment that he is going to push his very hardest as one of the more senior legislators up there, and someone who's almost in the room on some of these budget things, that his, one of his priorities is getting us a speed camera near PS175. So that's very important. That camera, the new cameras went from 100 cameras, there's gonna be 750 of them. So it's gonna be a lot. Virtually every school, not every school, there's a little over a thousand schools, but a lot of the schools are gonna get them and he's gonna to try to do what he can to advocate for us getting one because we are so remote and not always available to a police presence all the time. And the good thing is these cameras are gonna be on on weekdays, even during the summer, from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. So that's gonna help with the Friday traffic control too, that people are not gonna be zooming down the island you know, during those hours. It's not the solution to the problem, but it is a step forward and I think we thank him for that. Uh, the Assemblyman also promised us he's going to come to a future rising meeting. Senator Biagi is going to come to a future rising meeting. And I actually had a conversation the other day with Councilmember Jonai, and he's interested in coming as well. So we're going to be factoring in high-profile speakers to listen to you guys and to try to work on problems within the community. Uh, bulletin board, do you have any? Why don't you speak to that? You are the caretaker Baltimore. of the bulletin board. Yes. It's spoken on. Let's yeah, it's spoken on. We can, we can <laughs> we're going to move on from that? Next item. Okay. What's next on the Next item is the Welcoming and Social Committee. Uh, Joanne Valletta is here. She has agreed to be a part of that, so let's give her a round of applause. Um, Lori Vega, who is a very involved with, I don't see her here, but she is a very, oh, she is here. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, she has been the person, the reason Via Community Day is happening is because Lori works for Viacom and she came to City Island, so let's give her a round of applause, because that's gonna be really, really important. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on a social committee so we can get together in an informal environment and build those community bonds that we had up here on the projection screen here. Um, we just wanted to start by doing something, and this is a little, uh, we're gonna try to do this at every meeting because it's about the community coming together, not ripping into each other and tearing each other apart and questioning people's motives. Um, uh, Lori, do you want to come up and speak for a minute about the drift and what the drift's doing tomorrow? I know you're all the way in the back, but you are the leader, so thank you. Let's <laughs> give her a round of applause again. Yes. Hi, everybody. My name is Lori Vega. As some of you know, I um, work for Viacom and I had an opportunity to bring a project called by Community Day to City Island. Uh, that last year was our first year and it was very successful and we're bringing it back. And as uh, many of you heard, we're doing the oystering project, which is huge, huge, huge. Um, and we're hoping the sun gods will be with us and we'll get some decent weather. But um, on top of that, we're gonna be doing gardening and planting and painting. Um, but the drift um, is, is uh, monumental in doing these projects for Vi Community Day. And 
Um, I'm a new newbie to City Island. I'm two years old here, and I love this place. I grew up coming here, and part of that um, effort was my love for this place. I love City Island. I have a lot of memories here, and so it was my, my contribution. It was a way that I could give back to the community, and it is going to be a tremendous day tomorrow, so when you see the sea of blue t-shirts tomorrow, just, you know, say hey and give us your support and thumbs up because it is for you, it's for the community, okay? okay. And let's <laughs> give Lori a hand again. So there's been many a very much your friends, but it's made a more substantial contribution than people who have not ever been, or who, who have been here a very long time. Thank so you. thank you, Lori. Thank you, um, Barbara Zahm is here. She, I don't know if you want to speak, Barbara. I think you were kind of signaling me you didn't want to speak. It's fine. Um, but Barbara is one of the leaders of the Indivisible group on City Island, and we're gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna front load our announcement here, but Barbara, okay, I can, all right, so I've been given your permission. I don't have the date on, when is the date? 29th. On June 29th at PS175, which is a Saturday, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is gonna be doing a town hall meeting. Barbara was a big part of the reason that's happening. She was very persistent on this. To go around with balls in the hand. So thank you, Barbara. And again, the Indivisible Group, when they have the next meeting, Lauren is keeping, is, among other great things she does, is also getting together a coordinated calendar of everything on City Island. So one-stop shopping, you'll know where everything is, from the civic meetings to the chamber meetings to the community board meetings. You'll know where it all is because Lauren has been putting together the calendar. So thank you, Lauren. And... Um, the next thing on here, I already spoke with the Precinct Council, so I don't need to do that. They meet the first Thursday of every month. It's going to be on Lauren's calendar. The last thing we have on committee reports is from Community Board 10. Uh, does everyone know that City Island's in Community Board 10? It's basically a municipal uh, entity that's tasked with handling different land use items and city services for City Island, Country Club, Throgs Neck, Pelham Bay, Co-op City, Westchester Square, Zariga. And Matt wanted everyone to know that on May 14th at the Land Use Committee, they are going to be hearing about continuing a variance for the building when you first come over the island where the Dunkin' Donuts is, yeah. that the variance has lapsed, but it, yeah, we're assuming this is going to go through. We do have businesses there, Jack's Bait and Tackles on one end, and it's just basically to preserve it so that they can continue to operate a commercial entity. So if you're interested in this, May 14th, 7.30, 3165 East Tremont Avenue. We'll put the information on our Facebook page, uh, but the community board will be meeting on that. Um, does anyone here, I know we sent out an invite to the elected officials, I know, did anyone hear from an elected official before I close out the meeting? Just quick business comment. Yes, oh, uh, why don't we? Meeting or whatever. Yeah, sure. Um, so just real quick, we've been working on this, but I haven't quite finished it, but I just wanted to give you a heads up. So what I'd like to do for, as everyone who's a member of um, City Island Rising, whatever that means, um, however you're involved, um, is sort of a, um, a local business pledge, which basically says, and this is, this is not ironed out yet, but it's the concept, where like I commit, and we'll get a paperwork and all that stuff, I commit to spend $2 a day on City Island. And I know it sounds silly, but if, if everybody in the room spends $2 a day on City Island, that means that they spend $60 a month. If we can get 100 people as part of this organization to spend $60 a month, we have $6,000 that this room generates for the local economy. And not only does that generate $6,000 to the local economy, but what it does is, is you can look it up, there's a million numbers out there, um, Essentially, 30, at least 30 to 45 percent of the money that's spent locally gets spent a second time locally, and that's even more important. So, in, that, in essence, instead of spending six thousand dollars on City Island as an organization, we can be responsible for about eighty-five hundred dollars um, just by spending two dollars a day locally. And so, um, I sort of want to make that as part of our thing, as part of communicating with the local businesses, is um, spend some money because if you do, then maybe some of that money can go towards another new business on the island, like the coffee bar, like the flower shop, right? This is all new stuff that's going on now. Um, go buy flowers from the new thing 
Um, what's com com Commons in French. Commons in French. They're wonderful people. They, they unfortunately opened in December, so it was not an ideal time for plants. Um, go buy your plants for your garden at their store. What's that? And Mother's Day. And Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. This um, Sunday, Mother's Day. Don't more importantly. Out. So, and then the other thing about um, business, real quick, I know you got to go, is um, we're going we're gonna to start some type of education for the landlords. So anyone who thinks that um, if you get enough, essentially if we get enough places open, even with a lower rent, they can then fill all the stores and they can raise their rents, which is no problem. It's not that landlords shouldn't be making money, but if we have a healthier economy locally, everybody makes more money and then people have more things to do. So that's the business okay. end of that. Right, thank Thanks. you, Dan. Let's give Dan a round. Um, before we leave, Jack has the sign-up sheet. Did everybody sign up? Did anybody not sign up? Everybody signed up. Everybody who, did, who may not still have a question, we're going to be in the front. You can bring us your questions. You have the index cards. Give us the index cards if you're more comfortable with that. Finally, email cityislandrising at gmail.com. We have the Facebook page. You can message us on the Facebook page and we will get back to you. I know there was one concern related to a business with parking. We are reaching out to the business owner. We just want to work in partnership, not by you know, starting with 311. That's not an effective way of doing anything. So, Lauren is something said. The next meeting. The next meeting. All right, so like we said, we're trying to support local businesses as part of like practicing what we preach. So the next one will be June 11th, Tuesday, June 11th at Archie's Tap Room. Tentatively, we're in conversations, but it looks like it will probably be there. And look out, we're gonna be setting up a calendar for six months out. And again, like we said, we're taking every community meeting that we could think of into this calendar as we're developing it, so that we're not conflicting with other operations that are going out to support City Island. So keep an eye out, it'll be on Facebook, it'll be on email, and um, we hope to see you on June 11th. Awesome. All right, thank you, everybody. We'll be in the front if you need anything. Thank you, everybody. So, and.